Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to talk to you about my Latvian haul. So this is just all of the stuff I got during my visit to Latvia to discover some more about Latvian literature. So we've got some books, we've got some fridge magnets, we've got some miscellaneous postcards, we've got everything. I was going to pick up a, a bunch of stuff. We'll start with the most obvious, that is this. This is my Latvian flag. So, um... I've probably, by the time this video goes up, you've probably already seen me waving my Latvian flag, but it's very nice. And, uh, yes, a small Latvian flag. I've actually been keeping it in a pen pot up, up there so that it, like, stands up tall and proud, so that's very nice. I picked up a little coaster from, this is from the nice place, so, uh, and it really is a nice place. So it says, there is the sun above the clouds. And I just thought it was nice, it's very cute. Cute little uh, coaster, so I can keep my uh, drinks on it, my cups of tea. We have a book here. This is Baltic Comics Magazine number 27. And um, basically, I think it's monthly that this is published. And uh, yeah, it's a little, there's a whole series of these and they're really, really cute. As you can see, it's so kawaii. Uh, it says here, Baltic Comics Magazine number 27, January 2017. A snake with a fedora hat, a chain-smoking centipede, and a cat who smashes cell phones. Ah, stop! No, this was an introduction to a previous issue. As only our very best friends read it, we were sure we'd get away with using the same one again. If you've read this far, you must be a very good friend as well. We hope you'll enjoy the bittersweet BFF comics we've collected for you. If not, lick some funny flowers together with your best friends and everything will be fine. And there's about 12 different stories in here. They're all in uh, English as well, which is good because otherwise I couldn't read it. I cannot speak Latvian. And um, they're all kind of illustrated as well. So, well, it's a comic, you know. But it's because there's a, a bunch of different articles or stories in there, you get a really wide variety of different styles as well. For example, this one as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting this one. And I actually, again, because there are loads of these different editions around, I uh, I basically picked this one up in just because I thought it looked so cute. <laughs> Some postcards that I still haven't written and sent yet, but I do need to. So this is just a sort of general Riga postcard. And then here we have the Latvian National Library. Which I went to visit and which was lovely. So these are for me to write and send to my mum. <laughs> Hopefully by the time you're watching this I have actually got around to doing that. We have some stickers and again these are from The Nice Place. They're just very cute. Okay here we go we have it now here. So so this is some artwork by uh, Rebecca Lacosas. Basically there's a campaign now running called I Am Introvert and all the different authors are invited to submit a, uh, a recipe and then some of those recipes are then served in different um, cafeterias around the city. So this is Carlos Verdins and uh, it's the mock pilaf. It says, if you're discouraged to visit the cafe or the store by a hangover, you can make something I call the mock pilaf. Boil some rice as usual and then saute diced onions on the pan. Add grated carrots and the rice. Then add a beaten egg. You may add tomato paste or anything else you have in store. Cook, stirring at intervals until done. Eat alone, away from the others. There may have been other ingredients in the recipe, but if so, I am unable to recall them at the moment. P.S. As to, as to his preferences over which restaurants should serve this dish, the author said, I don't really want it to be served to anybody else. So I might even try and make that recipe. So let me know if you'd be interested in, in that. What have we got here? This is, uh, and um, I apologize for anybody whose name I butcher in, in my pronunciation, but this is Select Poems of Inga Gale and translated by Yeva Lesinska. And this is 30 Questions People Don't Ask. And this is by the Pleiades Press. So it's published in America. I can't remember whereabouts in America. But what's interesting about this is that it's uh, dual lingual. So you get the poem in both Latvian and English, which is very cool. Oh, and I got it signed as well. So it says, For Dane, thanks for coming, Inga. Then we have Latvia, 100 snapshot stories. And this is published uh, by the Latvian Institute. It's actually not available on sale. That said, I'm still going to review it as I do. But it talks about many of the different sort of parts of the city and for example got here pork and butter is one of the headings central market 
some local heroes as well. Amber, finding pieces of amber on the beach after a storm is thrilling. Mittens, of course, yes. The Latvian language, Baltic tribes. So there's a lot of sort of interesting little stuff, uh, little things in here, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to reading it and getting to know the country some more. And the reason it is a hundred snapshot stories is because they are about to celebrate their 100th anniversary, their 100 year anniversary. Came back with this. This is literally a uh, brochure, I think, really for the uh, for the Latvian uh, National Library. And it's a beautiful place, over a million books, 1.8 million I think I read. Here are some small fridge magnets that I got from the library. And as always, what I do with the fridge magnets is my mum gets some and I get some. So we will have to fight over that. And here, this is a uh, an infographic about Latvian publishing and, you know, the process and all that kind of thing. As well as a list of books that have currently already been translated from Latvian into English. This is about the uh, the We Latvia series and uh, it's 13 novels by 13 different authors and they all take a different time period from the 20th century and so you can kind of read them chronologically and um, you know see the, com the country as it develops really. But I mean they've got some some of the big names as well so for example they've got Inga Gale whose poetry collection was down there this was actually her first uh, prose novel. Well, who else did we have? Uh, Nora Eksteiner, who wrote Mother's Milk, which I'm hoping to read as well. That's been translated into English as uh, Soviet Milk, by the way. I have a small poem here by Semyon Karnin, uh, translated into English by Anton Tenser and uh, Kevin M. F. Platt. It says here, the, the project Poetry in 10 by 10 centimeters was carried out in cooperation with the Art Academy of Latvia. Very nice. So this here is a Latvian book market brochure. It's got information on all the different publishers and some infographics and that sort of thing. An estimated 2,146 new titles per year. We have things like the percentage that have been translated into different languages as well. So that's fascinating, a little bit light background reading. This is literally my very crumpled copy of the agenda as well. This is a cute little kitty cat that I brought home because it looks like Biggie, so this is for Becca. This is the, is it the unofficial map of Riga, which is where I was wandering around. It's pretty, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to zoom in and show you the entire, entire, um, you know, every square of the map, but this is uh, the Livonians. So, ooh. this is by Peter Damberg, translated by Aldis Balodis. So this is all about the, the Livonians and, yeah, so it says here, let me read this. The Livonians are a Finnic people indigenous to Latvia and have had great significance in the development of the modern Latvian language and culture. Latvian formed as a result of contact be between Livonian and several ancient Baltic nations, the Latgalians, Semigalians and Coronians and its unique characteristics arose specifically as a result of this mutual influence. Now, I believe it's a Livonian that um, only 20 people can now uh, can now read it, I believe. We have here Books to Fall for Latvia Adult Fiction 2017. So this is a brochure with all the different bits and bobs, um, you know, showing you the different authors and that kind of stuff. Some of them we met, so that's always good. And accompanying that, somewhere actually I don't even know I don't have that this is not in a very ordered thing by the way this is just in whatever order I happen to be grabbing these in we have a uh, you know Riga this week city guide so we have things talking about uh, the old town for example here the cat house the house is named after the two black cats perched on the roof here we have and I quite like the way this is done this is um, Orbiter which is a kind of uh, a Russian speaking but Latvian collective of poets but they do quite a lot of in art installations and that kind of thing. And this is their catalogue of all of the different books they've published. But I don't know if you can see, but it, it opens very strangely. So it folds up like this. And then you open it and you read it and it's in reverse order. So this is their first one, which was the Orbiter Almanac. The first Orbiter Almanac compiles work of many genres. Poetry, prose, translations, essays and photographs under the topic of Riga in the 90s. And um, these were really fascinating guys as well. I'm going to be doing a little bit more research on, uh, you know, on the kind of work that they're doing. Then we have um, 
We've got some business cards actually, but this is a very cute business card for example. So this is the card for Elise Nigale, publishing director at uh, Lille's and Mass, which is uh, one of the one of the larger Latvian publishers. And um, this is a bookmark and this is uh, Anna Valvare, who's an illustrator. Oh, this is an invite to classical modernism, early 20th century Latvian painting by art historian Des Lamberger. At, uh, in London and this is during the time of London Book Fair so I might go along we'll see I'm losing my voice but it's fine this is a box of matches that says Riga they work this is my notebook I don't know why I picked this up but yeah wrote lots of things in it I'm gonna gonna talk about some of those things in a video as well Okay, here's the books to fall for catalog for Latvian children's books as well. So for example, these were great, the uh, little Bicky books. And basically they're like, they're almost like little poetry chat books, except, um, yeah, you know, they're, they're ch children's stories basically. What's interesting about that is a lot of people collect them and it's not necessarily children who collect them, you know, adults will also try and collect the whole series and also uh, expats as well. While we were there as well we met some uh, some of the Latvian illustrators and we did the horse test so basically we were asked a series of questions and we filled out our answers on it and um, then we were presented with a custom illustration and so this is based on like the answers that I gave in the test and uh, yeah it's super cool it's also a fridge magnet so and as you can see that is clearly me and biggie this is another map of riga i don't know why i have so many maps of riga because i didn't ever use them um yeah we were we were being kind of shown around most of the time so this is a postcard this is from the uh bad dog postcards these are just available for free kind of around the city of riga which is cool and this says you me bad now is this another map this is another map uh, just a couple of other things. So this is my hello. I am introvert badge So this is a campaign that was being run uh, Based on kind of the, the Latvian national identity is um, you know The Latvian authors tend to be much more introverted than say American authors or British authors and they're a lot slower to self-promote themselves and a lot of that actually goes back to the Soviet era when it, it, it generally wasn't a good idea to draw too much attention to yourself. Let's just put it like that. There's also an I am introvert beer and this says books and music. Those are the most important things and uh, it's brewed with potatoes and the reason for that is because potatoes seem like a sort of introverty <laughs> type of thing to brew from and this is actually brewed by one of the authors as well so as well as writing he runs a small brewery and uh, yes I, I've already drank a bottle of this as well this was a, a spare bottle and um, it was delicious oh one last thing that I almost forgot this is a small sort of porcelain cat let me try and get the cat in focus never gonna work is it Anyway, trust, take my word on it, it is a small porcelain cap. And then last but by no means least is this awesome t-shirt, which I've never really seen a t-shirt like this, to be honest. It's customizable. This t-shirt has a quote on it, so it says, uh, life was waiting for my return, Latvian writer Nora Ekstena. However, you may notice, it's actually zips on, so I can unzip it. Come on, come on, Mr. T-shirt. And then we can switch it for a, a different panel. Let me read this actually before I... Sh so this says, I grew up with irony. It's my second skin. Latvian writer Inga Abele. So you can then replace it. And the idea of this having the letters in black is that obviously you have, this is the introvert version. This is the extrovert version, which is very cool. And there's, I've got another one of these somewhere as well that I can switch it out with. But I don't know what I did with it. So yeah, oh, it, it's hot. I'm hot. I'm worn out as well. But um, yeah, those are a bit of hair in my mouth. But yeah, those are a few of the things I brought back from Latvia. 
There's plenty more Latvian books that I will be checking out, but I just need to, um, a few of them haven't been published yet, and um, one of them I bet, basically I spent too much money and I was like, I need, I, no, I can't afford it at the moment, but I will get it soon. So um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for more Latvian literature because there's such a wide variety of it as well. It's That's what's interesting is you've got, you know, children's writers, you've got your illustrators, you've got poets. Poetry is much bigger, I would say, in Latvia than, you know, perhaps in the UK, which is cool because I'm really into poetry as well. Um, obviously, you've got translators out there as well. You've got people working in mixed media like the Orbiter Group. They're using, for example, art installations that are also poetic and that tell a poetry story. So, um, there's some really interesting stuff going on, so keep your eyes peeled on my channel for more information. And on uh, that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you'd like more bookish content, especially about Latvia. And I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.